Kia everyone, Andrew here. Welcome to my channel of hiking and photography adventures in Aotearoa, New Zealand. I am 62 consecutive days into a lockdown. And not only does that mean I can't leave Auckland for hiking and photography adventures, but because of our current health restrictions, film productions are not allowed to operate, so I can't even work. Now, I thought this might be a great opportunity to produce some more content for the channel, but I'm finding myself totally devoid of any creative inspiration whatsoever. So this week I've set myself a little project. It's very simple. I've chosen a local place that I know really well and I'm going to get up every morning and I'm going to go and I'm going to try and photograph the dawn. Now, I'm not really sure how this is going to play out. I haven't planned anything. I haven't planned compositions. I haven't looked at the forecast. I'm going in totally blind. The English translation of the name of the place that I'm going is The Dawn. So that's promising. But we are in the depths of New Zealand spring. And that means notoriously bad weather. So why don't you come along with me and see what happens when I spend an entire week chasing the dawn at Te Aratu Peninsula. Good morning everyone. So not an auspicious start this morning, in large part because sunrise was about 20 minutes ago and I've just got here. <laughs> My alarm didn't go off and I'm just not used to getting up early. Been in lockdown now for 10 weeks and getting up early is not really a priority. The point of this exercise is to get up every day and go shoot the sunrise no matter what. Luckily, the light's absolute rubbish. Um, there's, there, is, there was no sunrise. So the important thing though, and the point of this exercise is that if you go somewhere familiar, you're more likely to get a shot. So, I'm at Te Aratu Peninsula. I've shot sunrises here many, many times. Te Aratu translates into English as the dawn. Uh, so as you can imagine, it has pretty spectacular sunrises. And I've probably seen, honestly, more amazing sunrises right here than everywhere else in my life combined. It's that spectacular. Um, so there is always a shot. That is my experience. So the shot that I've got today, um, basically it's a little kind of minimalist thing um, that I think actually might look quite nice. Um, so we've got the high tide up so the water comes right up and all the mud flats are, are covered up and uh, but there's two little kind of planty islands directly ahead of me that are popping up above the water and then in behind them you have the city which is quite faded because um, there's quite a lot of particulate in the air so you can't see the city clearly and then there's big heavy low cloud above it so the shot I've got is a minimalist moody square crop um, with the water I'm doing a long exposure just to finish moving that water out um, and then I'm focused on those island little plants um, which are nice and dark and crisp and then in behind them I have the city, nice and faded, dull in the background with that dark cloud above it. So we'll take these shots and see how it turns out. Day two. Um, 
So I'm a little bit earlier today, in fact the gates down to this car park were closed because I was so early. So I'm just strolling down to the water now and having a little look. Uh, the conditions are a little different from yesterday, so still got the high tide, um, or fairly high tide, uh, very still. We do have less cloud in the sky, which is good, so that's promising. Um, there's some nice sort of mid and high cloud that's going to catch the early light really nicely. However, there's a nice thick band of cloud right on the horizon the whole way around. You get that quite often, so I don't know. That could interfere with the nice early light. Uh, we'll have a look when we get there. We'll look for something anyway. Um, uh, them's the brakes. found a composition I quite like so on the foreground here there's a bunch of these sort of bushy I don't know what they are maybe they're mangroves um, that are poking out out of the water and so they're in silhouette and then you've got the soft rippling water almost silk like amongst them so I'm just going to frame it up using a uh, wide angle this time and you've got the plants in the foreground the midground will be some nice hopefully lit colored beautiful looking water and then uh, behind that you have the city with the pretty sky above it all now one of the disadvantages with this tripod setup, which is my experimental ultra lightweight hiking tripod setup, which is what I'm using at the moment, mostly to prepare myself for an upcoming trip, uh, is that it doesn't go that low, so it's not a, yeah, it's not the perfect tripod by any means. So I've got my 12 to 35 2.8 lens on and I have it at its widest and I'm just trying to find a spot where these foreground mangroves are nicely positioned in the bottom third of the frame. I've got the city positioned roughly speaking on that bottom third line that gives me plenty of room for the sky. And then I just focus on those foreground plants. And thanks to the benefits of Micro Four Thirds, I know that everything's gonna be in focus. So my shot is framed up and yeah, I'm just kind of waiting to see what happens light wise as the, as the sun comes up. So we'll just wait and see. Um, it's really nice on these kind of quiet, peaceful mornings out here. I've sat here for many a coffee and a contemplation of the sunrise and as I, as I mentioned yesterday, I've taken many, many sunrise photos here. I suppose that's the point of this exercise is that if you find yourself in that kind of situation where you're not very motivated, um, coming back to somewhere really familiar where you know you can get 
good photographs is a really helpful way of kind of revitalizing your motivation as it were I'm about to lose my battery on the GoPro and on my camera <laughs> the, the lights kicking off so hopefully we can get the shots we need before the batteries die. I've got other batteries obviously but I don't really want to have to change a battery I think I'm gonna to have to beautiful morning so I think I got a decent enough photograph I hope so oh you can't see me now I'm in silhouette but we'll see you tomorrow Day three, Wednesday. Uh, so I've come to a slightly different part of the peninsula uh, to get a slightly different perspective. It's just a little bit around the corner from the last spot I've been the last couple of days. Um, and the reason for that is because we have a lower tide um, and these mud flats that come out from the um, water are more exposed and as a result you get really nice reflections Okay, so I'm shooting handheld, um, partly because ugh, I don't have much time. I was not here as early as I should have. Um, I've scrapped this idea of going with the um, the reflection of the mud flats, um, as I mentioned, just because the cloud doesn't really suit it so there's just this narrow window of kind of high well it's kind of is it high or maybe it's mid layer cloud that's um, behind the city which is where the sun's coming up and then you've got a thick band of low cloud which hasn't lit up which is above that and then beyond that you've got um, just clear sky so I've gone long lens um, so I've just got the edge of the water at the bottom of the frame and then the city in silhouette with the lit up sky in behind it and then that band of heavy cloud above which caps off the top of the frame. I am at f2.8 because there's nothing really in the foreground it's just the water at the bottom of the frame so I'm at f2.8 and ISO 200 and about um one four hundredth of a second gives me the right exposure so I can easily do this handheld uh, what to be honest even with this lens and this system I can shoot handheld down to like a tenth of a second quite comfortably so yeah no problem there um, I'm at 50 mil I'm on the 35 to 100 so for you full framers that's the 70 to 200 and I'm at 100 mil
Okay, so that mm, that kind of mid layer cloud that was in above the city is now starting to catch the light. Um, so I've got some pretty special light going on right now. Um, I'm staying with the 35 to 100, but I've gone a little bit wider just to get more of that in. Um, oh, might be good in a panorama. Um, but basically the um the higher cloud in behind the city is now a beautiful kind of orange some of it's silhouette like we you don't have all of it lit up but you've got the bright bright sunlight in behind it so it kind of works um but the that band of cloud that was above the city has started to break up um and it is now getting hit by the light so it looks pretty good I have to say. Like I say, Tiaratu is a well-named place. Uh, so, yeah, that, that light on those clouds probably lasted five minutes, if that. So I was a bit crazy there, just grabbing that. Um, and it's gone. It's gone as quick as that. So, got to be ready. Hence why I often actually shoot sunrises and sunsets handheld, um, just because uh, it just takes too much faff with a tripod. I'm not quick with one prefer handheld anyway but especially when the lights are changing like that because you don't know what's going to light up and you might need to suddenly change your composition you can't do that if you're on a tripod I find personally so yeah I often handheld so one last composition he thinks um, the sun's up now um, so I've just come down right by the edge of the water and I've gone wide and I've gone out to F8 and I'm focusing on these ripples coming through and I'm just waiting to get a nice pattern in the foreground. So I'm focused on the foreground, got the city in the background with the sun now up and it's all about these gentle waves coming through. Have a look at those, if I can. But cat handed him, holding this and ugh. trying to do camera things at the same time. The tide is slightly coming in, so I'm now actually in the water in the space of a few seconds that I've taken those photos. So I'm just going to move. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think those are going to be the best photos from today. Um, but I'm going to go before this water comes in any further. It's coming in very fast. Um, the area that I was crouched down taking my photo is now under about 8 inches of water. So that was quick. Um, right, another one bites the dust. If I can just interject here, I, I know what you're thinking, where's the sound? Well, in an act of supreme talent, uh, on my walk from the car that morning, I somehow managed to turn off the wireless transmitter for my microphone. Uh, as a result, all of the audio that I captured that morning on my GoPro sounds something like this. Ooh, yeah, I know. It's really a shame too because that particular morning I talked at some length about the philosophical underpinnings of landscape photography. Now, I don't exactly remember word for word what I said, but I'm pretty sure it was profound, insightful and intelligent. So you really missed out. Jumping back to the day in question, you can see that conditions were less than ideal. There was a heavy layer of cloud over the city 
and the gusty winds were so severe that even GoPro's legendary stabilization was put to the test. I was just about ready to throw in the towel and crawl back into my warm bed when abruptly the clouds over the city opened up like some sort of meteorological wormhole revealing the spectacular light show that was unfolding right then behind the clouds. Now it's hardly your traditional spectacular sunrise photograph but there's something kind of profound and evocative about the contrast between this window of spectacular light and an otherwise bleak and dark landscape. It's a metaphor that no doubt I discussed at some length the morning of. It's just really a shame that I wasn't able to capture any audio so that I could share my profound insights with you. Oh well, I suppose a photograph will have to do. Day five. Uh, I'm going to keep this brief. Um, I've come back to the same spot. I thought about um, trying to get that same composition again um, that I got yesterday, hopefully in some better light. Um, the conditions are horrendous. It's three times as windy as yesterday and it's raining. And the wind's coming from the direction of the city and from, from the east. So basically if I'm looking towards my shot, I'm just getting absolutely blasted by horizontal rain. Uh, in fact, I've turned away from the wind just to try shelter my microphone a little bit so you can at least have a chance of hearing me. And um, so my GoPro lens is probably getting absolutely hammered as we speak and I'm gradually disappearing behind raindrops. Um, I'm not even going to bother getting my camera out. I'll put the long lens on it ready just in case something comes up and I can grab something handheld but basically yeah no it's not not pleasant. Okay so the deal is I stay till sunrise um, just in case there might be some I don't know some shaft of amazing light through some gap in the cloud. Uh, that's an eight minutes. Cannot come soon enough. Right, well, um, it's 6.30. The sun has allegedly been up for two minutes. Looks exactly the same. There's no shot here. I'm done. It's, if anything, it's getting worse. The wind's getting stronger. Uh, it's just, it's awful. So, yeah. You might get a bonus. Maybe tomorrow I'll come back because I did want to get five photos and it uh, feels a bit anticlimactic ending like this. Um, I haven't even taken a photograph. I'm not going to. There's absolutely no point. So maybe Teatro 2 doesn't always offer up a picture. It was fun, wasn't it? Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's Tuesday. Tuesday a week and a half later. <laughs> I really wanted to finish on a good note and oh, we might just get it this morning. Uh, we have got a whole bunch of really 
high cloud, just enough in the sky. I think it could be a good one. There is quite a thick layer of cloud just right on the horizon, but I'm hoping it's high enough that as the sun comes up, the sunlight's going to come in underneath it and we'll still get an amazing light display. Um, we'll just have to wait and see, but um, for now I just need to find a composition to start with. option for a tripod's not quite as fast as using a real tripod <laughs> you can tell but it is a lot lighter doesn't really matter for today but we're still practicing with this gear show you what my composition is so keeping it really simple I've got the city right on the midway point of the frame uh, you can see it through there and then I've got these three little islands and the key thing is to just make sure the separation so they don't overlap which is a bit tricky because my tripod only goes so far and um, I'll probably crop it just a little bit on the sides to clip out these headlands on either side um, but I'll just leave them in on the composition just to give me that flexibility in post and then uh, I'm not going to go for a long exposure just because I love the texture in this really silky water um, so I'm just going to leave it as is. I've set my focus just on this foreground water and that's going to um, put everything in nice sharp focus you can see I'm at f8 ISO 200 and we got a little bit of pink in the sky just above and to the right of the city but we'll see what happens as the sun comes up the, the lights starting to drift off that upper cloud now so we might not get the right balance of light on the cloud after all but um, what's now starting to happen I can actually see that where the sun's coming up you're now starting to get a little bit of red light in that cloud on the horizon so now what's happening is our mid layer cloud is starting to light up and that's oh actually starting to look quite nice so oh, oh we could have something here oh the light now is epic oh this is so good this so what's happening is that we have multiple layers of cloud in the sky and the sun hits the high cloud first and that gives you that pinker um, color and then the light hits the mid layer cloud after that and that tends to get lit up more of an orangey color um, and then if you have low cloud that's the last cloud to get lit up just as the sun comes up. Yeah, it's, it's a good morning. You can't complain about a morning like this. Sun's up now, dog walkers are out, and 
we're almost done. Feels so good to have got a nice picture to end on. I was very worried when I went out on that Friday. I actually went out on the Saturday as well, hoping I'd get something then. I didn't even get out of the car. It was just awful. I've been back a couple of times since and not shot anything. Um, yeah, this morning I wasn't sure. I really wasn't sure, but I think it was worthwhile getting out of the car. So, <sighs> thank you everyone. Thank you so much for watching, for following along. 